What's up, everybody? I hope everybody can hit me well. Waiting on you to. All right, what's up? What is up? Coming live and direct. Got another great interview. Let me let me tell y'all something. Oh, what are my favorites are here? Um. So I'm about to bring uh, Alicia Cooper in real quick. We're gonna talk about her film Fat Stripper that's premiered on Quelly TV today. We're really excited. But let me tell y'all something, just real quick, okay? I did. I swear we gonna get started. I didn't know Stephen A. Smith went on uh, the Rich Eisen. So I did the Rich Eisen so last month to promote Bad Trip, and Rich brought up the celebrity basketball game of last year that I played in in Chicago, and you know. I didn't do exactly what I thought I was going to do. I was like, I'm going to get 15 and 5. Didn't happen like that. I put the 200 money. Anyway, I told the story. Just to watch Stephen A. Smith confirm my story, first of all, and go in on me is the funniest thing in the world. So I retweeted it. If you follow me on Twitter, do that. I'm going to put it on my page sometime today. But when I tell you, I was in tears laughing. When Stephen A. Smith tear into you, it's just something funny about it. He's like, yo, you know, it, it's, it's so funny. Like, it, fam, it is the funniest. I, that made my day. I had a good day today, too, you know, as far as work. Me and Kevin's doing promo for um, uh, Fatherhood, which comes out uh, June 18th on Netflix. Uh, but fam, whew, good laugh. All right. Alicia, I got you. I saw you. I'm uh, I'm we'll gonna bring you in right now. Oh my God, that was so funny. Ooh, let me buy real shiny though. <laughs> nah, I can't. Let me do my bottom. Make sure I got my thing Hey, how you doing my thing set up? Hold up, give me a sec. Give... Let me try to lift the seat up. Okay. I hope it's oh, this ain't cool. working, Lord. Lord. Okay, this should uh, do it. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Man, it's good to see you. I am. Ha well, first of all, this is what I want to say real quick before we even get into our conversation, right? And I really feel like I have to say this. Um, you know, it's a lot going on in our country. And I know I'm annoyed and upset, just like everybody else is. But that's what I, I think we all should do, right? I, besides, look, I know I post everything, too. I repost stuff. I think we should keep saying uh, Dante's name out loud. All that needs to be correctly done. But also, let's do this, Black people. Let's also show us in success, too. So as much as we post about um, things that's happening, these tragedies, let's also talk our shit, too, yeah. about doing, doing, being great. Being great, being okay. human, being yeah. really good at Like, you know what I mean? And I thought about yeah. that because the other day uh, I was like really, um, I was feeling a certain way about just things doing well and stuff like that. And I'm like, I shouldn't feel like that. Like, you know what I mean? And it's not yeah. fair yeah. because all the trauma they put us through, you start feeling bad about having success. success. <laughs> yeah. And that's not fair. So fuck that, right? I it's think not they fair. be a success, successful. So as much as we, we should, we should expose these assholes yeah. that's doing all this bullshit, but along yeah. with that, let's say, let's also let brag about how great we are and how dope yeah. we are. And that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Like that's, I want to get yeah. that out of the way. When yeah, and let me tell that, you, yeah. yeah, but just, uh, you're correct because your movie Bad Trip that came <laughs> right at a time when most of us needed to go on a bad trip. You know what I'm saying? Like I was like, this is the movie. I didn't even realize I needed. I laughed so hard. I watched that sucker twice. And my favorite part was genders and genres. But <laughs> I just, I said, what you are doing is medicine in a time where we need it the most. And I just want to thank you for your talent because, you know, you've been, a, you've, been, you've been a beast long before Hollywood realized it. And I'm just wow. glad they realize it now. Well, Alicia, this is what I'm excited about talking to you today about Fat Stripper, which is really, really funny. Yeah, like the title alone should make y'all make y'all want to go see, see this. So it's streaming <laughs> right now on Quilly TV. And what but well, first of all, what made you come up with the concept of Fat Stripper? <laughs> well, you know, sitting in the house, we all got, you know, got rocked 
by by COVID. I mean, the week COVID hit, I lost the, the good paying gig headline in the Tahoe Improv. So I had to I had to sit down and rub my temples thinking about all the money I lost. <laughs> And then, you know, so now I'm sitting there. So I slept for like the first month. I think I was just, just in denial about what was really going on in the world. And then I got up and I said, you know what, you got to do something. So I decided I was going to start writing and creating and directing and shooting my own stuff. And I knew I could find some crew members because we all sitting around looking at each other. And so <laughs> I said, now you need an idea. I said, I want to make it a comedy because the first one I did was a suspense thriller. I said, I want to make this one a comedy. And then, you know, when you low budget, I'm like, you ain't going to be able to afford no actors. So I'm a star <laughs> in it. And then, <laughs> and then I said, now, what could the concept be? A girl who has to deal with the pandemic. And so I'm like, okay, well, why does she have to deal with a pandemic? Well, she's been unemployed. She finally got a job at a temp agency. Soon she get the daggone job, a pandemic hits. What can she do? She can go back to Smitty's old strip club because damn if the state going to tell him what he can and can't do. Smitty going <laughs> to let people in through the back door and get this cash. And she going to go back and get her cash through Smitty. But oop, I ain't been there in 20 years and I done gained a little weight. I done forgot about that part. I was, I was a sexy stripper 20 years ago. Things are a little bit different now. So I take my fat ass on down to the strip club and make it do what it do. But that was the whole concept was a, a girl who had to go back to an old job as a stripper. And she had been eating a little bit <laughs> since the last time she was there. But her old, her four old regulars came back. You saw them old regulars came back. So look, don't, don't give too much away. Don't do that. Okay. Just a quick synopsis okay. of it because I won't, I won't okay. keep okay. watch this. But it's okay. really that's just, <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty much what it is, and it's so it's so it's so so funny. Like like I know me and Deshaun are like honored to have you a part of this platform. But Alicia, you've been doing this. I've known you for man like a while. Now. I think about it, like a while now. Shit, like I'm we yes, yes, just like just through the circuit of it. Damn, for a yeah, four, it's man. been at least fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Least, yeah. Where yeah, you originally yeah, from? Yeah. yeah. I'm originally from Maryland, right side out, right outside of DC. But we lived in three or four different cities at some point. But <laughs> what's what's been all your city? Well, well, I tried to start doing comedy in Maryland, and I didn't realize people was writing material because Def Jam hit, and everybody looked like they was just going off the dome. So I thought that's all you had to do was jump up there and be funny with nothing prepared. And I was crashing and burning in Maryland. You know, when I started out in the D.C. area, it was um, hilarious comics night now, like Dominique, Red Grant, Joe, uh, Claire, all those guys were doing it when I started in the same town. Mm. And I, I was like, damn, they funny. I'm sucking. You know, but, it, <laughs> but I lucked up because the crowds I got didn't boo. These were bougie black folks. They were just silent. <laughs> so, you know, and I might have rather had a boo in this mug, but, you know, so I stopped. I didn't, you know, I couldn't understand why I wasn't funny. I was always funny in school. So when I moved to L.A. to produce television shows, I started up again. So I did comedy in L.A. when I lived here. I moved to New York City for one year. I did because I always wanted to live in New York City to do comedy. And I did it one year there. And that was, that was a strong year. I was doing like five shows a night in New York City. Then I moved to Vegas because I wanted to get a residency. Didn't know what you needed to do to get a residency, but I moved to Vegas. I was there for a year. Then I came back to L.A. And I didn't know what I was going to do when I got back to L.A. I was like, well, maybe I'll go back into producing. Because, you know, every time you leave and come back, you're at the back of the line. Yeah. But I wasn't in L.A. a good year before I got an email from the comedy store saying, we're putting your name on the wall and making wow. you a regular. So it's a trip what God does for you because, Whenever you at your lowest and you about to bounce, he give you some sign that says keep going. Mm. And my name on the wall of the comedy store was that sign. And then I was working consistently there. I was in the main room and and you you know you get a percentage of the door when you're in the main room. So my checks was good enough that I didn't have to go back on the road. So I just stayed home and I would write and do things I wanted to do. But that was all from the comedy store and them reaching out to me. I didn't even ask. And you never know who's watching you. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you don't know how other people perceive your comedy, your act, what it is that you do. And just to get an email like that out of the blue, man, that was a blessing. That really, that picked me up at a time when I needed to be picked up. 
Wow. And you know what's, what I love about that? Because it, it, it matches the way you move in general, I think. Like, you are very proactive to me. Like, I said, proactive entertainer where you do your own shit. You ain't waiting on nobody. Because mm -hmm. outside of Fat Stripper, you know, you, you sent in the, the drama. I forgot which, what is, what's the title? Uh, just Us. <sighs> that shit <laughs> powerful yo and yeah, yeah. you know it's it's very interesting that like you have this crazy mind i think people sleep on comedians when it comes to not only just writing comedies but being able to to do dramas like yeah. you know i think that's important for us to do i think that, like i know that's a purpose thing you do like you do that on purpose mm -hmm. like to show like like no i'm not just that i'm all yeah. of that right yeah 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 i tell people all the time i'm a comedian i'm not a clown and I always tell people that if you really pay attention and look at who's balling in drama, they were comics. Michael Keaton, uh, uh, Tom Hanks, uh, 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 um, uh, Monique, Jamie Foxx, uh, uh, what's the guy, Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Ja these people started out as stand-ups. And yeah. look how they killing it in drama. So, and, well, you know, there was a time when people put you in these boxes. If you're a comic, you can't do drama and all this stuff. That's the beauty of where we are today, especially with streaming. Streaming blew the lid off of a bunch of stuff. Because as African-Americans, we were always told our films wouldn't travel well overseas. Nobody wanted to see us outside of the United States. When we knew that was a lie, how you imitating everything we do if you don't want to see us? <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. So I think they wanted more of us, but we were told, oh, the Nielsen ratings. I ain't never known nobody black with a Nielsen box. So they tell us <laughs> the Nielsen ratings and all this mess. Streaming, they can't get you like that. And you see who bringing it in. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's, what, that's what's interesting about what Deshauna has started with Quelly TV, which I think mm -hmm. is amazing, which is why I wanted to be a part of that is... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, because of the streaming platforms, we can get really specific about who we give opportunities to. And we, you know, our goal always has been to like display amazing black content creators from all over the world, which has been fascinating for me personally, like meeting these guys in Tanzania and just like, you know what I mean? Like, whoa, yeah. like, and I'm, and they're all gifted. They all have these great ideas and they didn't necessarily have a, a stage to do everything on. I mean, and that's the thing about it. I think, I think you're brilliant, honestly, Alicia. If I've never oh, said this, thank you. I, I think the way you're doing things, I think by even by you putting, especially Fat Stripper here on Quelly TV, I, I like the fact that we're able to like, like feature you and brag about you. You know, this is like you know when they looking for directors and writers, and they like we don't know who the director writes, blah 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 blah, and then boom, you have somebody who not only can do it and execute it, but like. You know, you, you're you're crazy talented, like like for real. And you always had respect for the game. A lot of people don't respect the game, you know? Yeah. Like for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're well, I appreciate that you said that. But even before I got in the game, I would find the A-list and ask them questions about mm -hmm. the game because I really wanted to know before I just jumped in. I, I, I asked Cheryl Underwood. I said, Cheryl, what advice do you have for a new comic? And she said, do not start out blue. She said it would be the hardest thing to get that label off of you. Start out clean, and if you want to, then become blue. And mm -hmm. so that's why I always started writing. I wrote clean first, you know. Then I asked Monique. I said, Monique, you got any um, uh, tips for a new comic? And Monique said, get half your money before you leave the house and the other half before, before you open your mouth. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know... <laughs> <laughs> but, see, but, but, that's, but see, that's what I'm saying. It, it's funny because somebody asked, what does that mean? People don't have respect for the game. What, people don't have respect. And that's what, I don't even know if it's just with comedy. It might be with hip hop too, with, music, with everything where people think when they're at their age that they're the ones creating all this stuff. Like you're the most original person in the world. And that's not mm -hmm. the case. It is mm -hmm. people that came before you. That's little, mm -hmm. no sub, Richard Pryor really at a, anything a black comic can say the brother said it first. Like he's literally with certain things. It was it, that yeah. man. Like so. It's, so I'm saying, like the respect yeah. of the game is respect who comes before you, and be okay yeah. with listening to them. And that's a big yeah. deal. Like you said, you went to Cheryl yeah. Underwood and Monique. You like yo. I want to know information. Like that's what that's what mm -hmm. I did too. Like Sid and Bill mm -hmm. and all those guys because I respected yeah. it. I still do. I'm not gonna walk around here like I'm just out here. I will be. I'm the first one. I'm kidding because I'm the man. Like no, that's not the case. It is people that came mm -hmm, mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. before me. Like even you know we think about yeah. 
uh, black entertainers that had to go through, especially comedians, you know, you know, we talking about like, and it's, it's a comedy documentary that shows this, but like, just, man, they had to do certain things just to eat, right? It wasn't even, you know, it wasn't the best roles. You put blackface on a black person, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> ooh, yeah, I remember. Work. Yeah, uh, uh, Della Reese was saying they could work in Vegas, but they couldn't sleep there. You mm. know, it's a lot of people that did stuff for us that we do have to pay homage to. And, you know, I, I agree with you. You nailed it. You nailed it. It's a lot of people who opened up some doors for that we were able to actually walk through. And I appreciate that, you know, I appreciate it. But, you know, as far as being a filmmaker, what that's the, the best part about being a comic first is that as comics, you know, when I first thought I was hacky as hell because I didn't know how to, how to write, I didn't know what to do. And you know what works because you've heard in a sense already. So you, you taking the cheap work because you don't want to bomb. But then as I started learning how the best thing you can do is to sound original and have an original voice. That's what I started doing when I started writing my movies is I want to write those with an original voice. And, and I want to make it feel like even though there's nothing new under the sun, I want you to feel like you haven't seen this. Mm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Well, Alicia, that's what I, I, I love about, and once again, guys, so, you go stream Fat Stripper right now on Quelly TV. It is right there. It's, it's right there for you to laugh at. If you need a matter of fact, I know you need to laugh. I ain't going to even ask you if you do. Damn it. Yes, all of us do. So go download the Quelly TV app if you haven't done it yet and watch and watch uh, Fat Stripper. But that's what, that's what I think is cool, too. Like, you know, I think you're a really good filmmaker. Like, what are some of the other things you want to do well, just what do you want to do? Like, what what are the other projects you want to do? What are the other, you know what I mean? Um, I have a bunch of other projects. And to be honest with you, after saying Bad Trip, I started writing a hybrid comedy, mm. you know, that comes up with the hybrid, with the hidden camera and all that stuff. Because I think you guys have opened up a genre that can just go so many places and have so many legs. And we haven't seen it in the African-American space. You know, it's actually inspirational. So I would love to do a hybrid kind of movie. I had a script, uh, a feature script that I was like, I can take a chunk of this and twist it and make it a little bit more of a, 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 a thing with more hidden camera and stuff where people don't know they're in it and, and still keep the essence of that script. So um, that's something that I'm thinking of. I want to turn Fast Strip into a feature. And actually, uh, Lizzo's company is looking at it now. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, so I have a few, I have a few more things that I want to do. I have so many ideas and so much that I want to do. And, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun time to be a creative, you know, so I'm, 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 I'm just looking forward to whatever the future holds. And I still audition, you know, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to uh, sell stuff and direct stuff and give myself a small part in it so I can stop auditioning. That audition process mm -hmm. is grueling. Man, you ain't, got, you ain't got to tell. I, I know. I mean, it's one of those things where, like, I mean, I got lucky. Um, I mean, it's a blessing, but it's luck a little bit of it too, I guess. Sometimes, like, to do a movie like Get Out that helped open the doors where they started offering me things and shit. But like, yeah. Yeah. the audition process was frustrating even more because it's sometimes I know I was better, right? And but then the look might be different. Is it like all that shit? And it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Or somebody might have more, more, more um, social media followers. Yeah. You know, it could be anything. Yeah. <laughs> so like, so real, you don't audition anymore? Like, nah. <laughs> I mean, if somebody <laughs> sent me an audition for a, a big film that's happening now, and I was insulted. I was like, no, nah, nigga, I ain't waiting for this shit. Like, offer me this shit like you did everybody else. Like, and it ain't like that. You know what's funny? And this once again, it's a, it's, when you're black, we feel like who I do. I, it's okay to have the audacity the same way these other cats do. And when yeah. I started hearing about the way, like, you know, a lot of other cats be like, I'm all for only things like that. And I'm like, well, fuck that then. You know what yeah. I can do? I, fam, if yeah. you want me, it's what it is. Yeah, you know yeah, saying? yeah. You, yeah, your, your, your reel is on every, every film, every everything. What do you? What do you? What else you need? Like, I mean, they can see anything you need. They can go look at it. So you're right. At some point, you got to put your foot down. It's like going from feature to headliner. Some part, some point, you got to stop featuring. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you like look. I got a head. No, that's real talk. And I think it's so interesting that you know when 
uh, you know, I look at like where everything happening now, it's just, it's just being okay with being comfortable, being, being great. And I think for a long time, just in general black people, cause we always feel like when we are becoming great, people always find a way to like fucking ugh. tear you down, man. Tear you and, down. And, and yeah. so like, I, what bad trip open for you know with you as far as creatively because when you think about it, it is so interesting because when we watch the borat movies and the jackasses honestly black people are like i ain't doing that shit okay can we really do that and then when you do bad trip it's like oh shit okay we proved that we can prank black people they might be the best people to fucking prank right <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. To do that, right? It's it's a very, it's a very <laughs> interesting thing. Like, which I think, like, I love hearing that from you. That that it inspired you to even, yeah. Like, because it's it's it shouldn't just be. I know I, I don't know if I could ever do that shit again. First of all, like, you know what I mean? Like, so it means somebody else should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. it's a way to break out new people. To be honest with you, you know, what I'm saying people it that is. nobody don't fucking know, and it's like you do that yeah. shit, and that's yeah. what it is. Like, Oh, wow. So I, I love hearing that actually, and they're gonna look for more shit. Like mean, it's too, you know. I, I was talking to Eric about. It. I, I hope we would look to produce more of those movies. Well, he only have yeah. to be in them. Yeah, you know yeah, like, yeah. You know I mean? And having your name and Eric's name on it gets the soul. So yeah, so, man. And and how to get it done? Like these cats, you know, we did have the jackass right. people along with Katow and they combined forces. And I think we did, man, they didn't, know, you could, when I think about it, the cameras was nowhere. These people didn't fucking know who was doing that shit. Like it was, <laughs> it was crazy, right? And we had to be in character the whole <laughs> time. You know, so it's just one of those things where like, uh, I love. And I let love me tell you, you did such a good job with that. You, you like, I mean, you killed it. That gorilla scene when you because you stayed in character during the gorilla scene with them women hollering, Jesus, hey. Jesus. I was on the floor. That was the that was the toughest one out of all of them. Where I was trying not to break because the aunties were saying all types of shit. They're like, <laughs> and I was trying not to. I was like, that was the only time I was like, I fucking break because they just yelled out shit. She wouldn't do that for you. Get get your ass out of there. Like they were saying all types of shit. To this. <laughs> It was the and when you when you look up there and said he's a human being, <laughs> I was done. I said this fool here, I'm done, I'm done. Y'all killed that. Y'all killed. Like I said, y'all inspired me. Y'all killed that. And I did a movie recently with the jackass guys on Paulie Shore called Guess House, mm. where I played the realtor. And now those guys have no fear. <laughs> so y'all teamed up with the right people. <laughs> It's so scary. I was like, should I be doing this fucking movie? Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I knew you was thinking that with the dicks taped together. I knew you oh. was thinking that. Well, just think about it. I, and I can only admit to this now. I'm like, wait a minute. I remember like they kept telling me certain pranks. I'm like, God damn, I ain't read the whole script. So it's like, it's like, what the fuck are you doing today? So it was, <laughs> it was, it was like, oh shit, what the fuck did I sign up for? Oh, uh, oh okay. I was crying because I knew that's what you were thinking, but it was it was awesome. It was awesome. Well, and y'all y'all inspired so many more people. And I just want to thank you because when I was doing comedy and I was trying to get into jokes and notes in Chicago, you called Mary on my behalf and got me in. And I and I, I thank you for that, man. You are just that type of person. You are just that oh, type of person. And and I, I just really appreciate you. No, I I I'm so excited for you to be a part of this. Y'all, please go see Fast Tripper today. Download the Quilly TV app. Watch it today. You need a laugh. It's going to be really fucking funny. Alicia kills it. And uh, <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm, I just think you're so dope. And it's just, it's, it's very um, honorable for me to be able to celebrate you uh, by, oh. by uh, premiering your film on Quilly TV. And just even just talking to you now. Because you, you're, you're one of the real ones in the game. I love talking to you. I love how your spirit is. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I feel like my discernment always, 
I'm always good at reading who who I think is good people, and that you're just good people in general. You know what I'm saying? Straight Thank up. you so much, and the feeling is mutual. And congratulations on all your success. I'm I'm taking this trip with you. Yeah, I'm clapping with you. I'm yeah, yeah. You got a fan in me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, well, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, everybody, please right now go stream Fast Stripper on Quelly TV. Uh, Alicia, thanks for hanging out with me. You are just you just extremely dope, you know. And just like just I just love just meeting these amazing, great, fearless, smart, creative black women in our business. And you're one of them. So man, I appreciate you. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. And thank you for having me. No problem. Bye everybody. Bye bye.